Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello and welcome everybody on the, the University of Eucadia Talk Show call tonight, Wednesday the uh, 7th of September 2011. I uh, welcome also those that will be listening to the call later either by downloading it from talkshoe.com uh, and it is in show number uh, 90342 or those that will be downloading it from the University of Eucadia website. And that address is university.ucadia.info. So before we begin, as always, uh, tonight what I wish to do and the purpose of these calls is to share the insights and research that we continue to do each week, to share the feedback from you and from uh, that has been brought to us in terms of improvements, things that have worked, things that haven't worked, uh, ideas and suggestions that hopefully you will find useful and relevant to your particular situation. And above all, remember, this is about producing and supporting a model. Uh, it is not meant to be legal advice and always treat this material from a competent position. So with that, let me start just by the regular format of tonight. For the first hour, hour and 10 minutes, I'm going to cover some of that research and updates and feedback and important issues that you've asked me to raise this week. And then in the second hour, even if we go a little bit over, what I'd love to do is hear your questions, your comments. And in that second hour, I just ask if you can, please. There are two ways. You can type in your question by putting in all caps the word question and then the nature of your question. Or I would love to hear you uh, by calling in and you can do that by pressing star 8 or hash 8 uh, at the end of the call. So with that in mind, let, let's start. The topics tonight that I'd love to cover with you is I'd like to continue on the theme of the general executor how to conduct oneself in the role of the general executor. And the reason I want to talk about this is that a number of you have provided important feedback in the last week about this saying, how does one conduct oneself? And how do we avoid falling back into the same old habits of being reflexive, reactive, and falling back into behaving as less than an executor when we find ourselves under pressure? I want to also cover with that the concept of law first and foremost as auricula that is spoken and putting again in context the nature of language and the importance of our ability to stand and speak clearly, knowing who and what we are. I want to bring some new information to you on an important area that is relevant to foreclosures, is relevant to tenancy and land, and it is the subject of SOCAGE, that's S-O-C-A-G-E, SOCAGE, or Tenancy in Common. And I want to share with you some of the brilliant research that's been done by a number of you in the last week on this. I want to talk briefly also about Roman document or Roman administrative procedures. I want to cover that because we uh, continue to come back to the question of how do we overcome the apparent rejection of our documents? Why, in spite of everything we've done, do we still find documents rejected? I want to return to some of the key understandings. And last but not least, I want to cover the aspect of the changes, earth changes, concerns, fears that people still have, and the question of the covenant, some of the objections that people still continue to find, but this issue of the spiritual dimension and the issue of the living dimension and what is going on. I'm trying to give you my understanding, my knowledge of what's going on and share that with you, and hopefully you'll find that useful. So, Executor, Auricular Law of Foundations, the concept of sockage being a tenancy in common and foreclosures, Roman document administrative procedures, 
and this big question of what is going on, these continuing concerns that many of us have in terms of life changes. So there's a lot happening at the moment. There's a lot to cover tonight. Let's get into it straight away. Well, if you've been listening to the last few calls and you've been looking at the websites of one-heaven.org and now the court sites, you'd be aware that we continue to develop and prepare the Eucadian communities so that you will have the tools necessary to stand with confidence that is your right as the general executor occupying the office of general executor of your estate. And it's taken some time because this is not merely a replica of the Roman system. We're not here to mimic them. This is based on foundational work that has taken not just years, but unfortunately has taken decades to prepare. Now, whilst we have revealed that it is of the utmost importance to recognise your role in the role of being the general executor of your own estate and that as general executor you must begin to act accordingly and whilst we've explained the difference between being an executor and being a trustee, the difference of being an executor and a beneficiary and whilst we've explained how the system came to presume the role of being executor by declaring us all intestate or dead and then enclosing our will by requiring our will to be written as opposed to spoken. A number of you, and I realise this, a number of you are still coming to terms with how we behave in the appropriate manner. And as a result, there has been some disappointment brought back to me where people with the best intentions have moved forward and found that when put to the test, their confidence and their knowledge and uh, their ability to express who they believe themselves to be as executives has not succeeded. So I want to go back again to some principles of this, share this with you and hope that we can move forward with more confidence and certainly with a more solid foundation in knowing who and what we are and in particular finding remedy with this knowledge. This of course being the crucial thing. What I've said and I have continued to say this from the beginning is despite of all the promises that some may make and indeed despite of some of the claims and some of them quite outrageous claims and even charging of money for those claims. There is no remedy in documentation. There is no magic bullet in the form of some special secret administrative procedure that ultimately will render you free and solve all your problems with the Roman system. And the reason I can say that with confidence that there is no remedy in paper, there is no remedy in procedure on its own, is that the law is and has always been auricular. The law has always been oral, spoken first. And that paperwork, paper and the writing, has always been a memorialization a secondary element. And whilst the Roman system has claimed us and controls us and, and uh, beguiles us with all their paperwork, when it comes down to it, if you cannot speak clearly who you believe you are, what you believe yourself to be, then all the paperwork in the world will not help you. And this, unfortunately, was one of the hard life lessons for a number of you this week who felt that in paper alone you could present yourself as executor but when pressed in flesh failed to express yourself clearly. 
There is remedy. There is remedy to your tax problems. There is remedy to your foreclosure issues. There is remedy to your custody battles. There is remedy to whatever attacks you are under when you know who you are, when you can express that clearly, when you know what are your obligations and how to conduct yourself as an executor. Now, I said last week, and I've given the context to all this, and the reason I'm doing this is I feel this, beyond anything else, is one of the most important things. And even though we've said it before, I believe it is of incredible importance that is expressed as clearly as I can do it tonight to you. And it is this. The role of being a general executor is the hardest role you will ever seek to undertake in your life. Because it is not a role based on revenge. It is not a role based on arrogance where you seek to trip up, slip up members of the private bar guild or expose their ignorance of their own law. The role of executor is not some way to magically make yourself rich by somehow tapping into accounts, private accounts and other secret trusts and structures that the Roman system has placed. The role of executor is hard because it requires you to actually spend a significant amount of time learning and relearning and training and retraining and testing and retesting. If you have not read all the canons so far in divine law, natural law, cognitive law, positive law, and ecclesiastical law as they are presented on the home page of one-heaven.org, then you, I believe, are not prepared yet to the role of general executor. If, on the other hand, you have spent a life studying scripture, living with honour, and knowing the significance of the words of wisdom with such teachers, such as Yeshua or Buddha, or the purity of Sufism and in the original true message of Muhammad, if you have lived with self-discipline and you seek to do no harm to others and you know the truth, then you are well on your way and in, in most cases would be ready and more than able to express yourself as an executor. Unfortunately, and I'm included, whilst I know these words, whilst I've studied these words, I find myself every day being challenged to behave in the manner befitting of the role of a general executor, such as Yeshua, such as Jesus, such as Buddha, such as Akhenaten and Moses, such as leaders that we expect and respect in, in roles of directors, in teachers, in guides. So if you haven't lived your life that way, and unfortunately most of us haven't lived our life with the self-discipline, with the denial of ego, and with the peace and honour of the golden rule, then it is up to us then to take the road of learning these canons. And some may say, why should I learn these canons? Why not learn Black's Law? Why not learn the tools of the private bar? Because the rules of the private bar continue to change. If you go and read Black's, and I suggest you do, pick a definition. In fact, seeing that we're speaking of executor, Go and look at the evolution of the meaning of executor and general executor as it has been displayed throughout a sample of Black's Law's dictionary from the beginning. And what you will find is that far from the law and their system having a bedrock and understanding or bedrock and comprehension of foundation, they have been changing the system as they go. So it's no good simply relying on their system to give us the principles.